Hi, my name is Paula and I'm a huge fan of ozone. Ozone for me was a life transforming event. It gave me energy, it cleared my thinking, it cleared my head, it lifted my mood, it resolved my psoriasis. I was actually about to lose my nails due to psoriasis and ozone completely reversed that. But I had to find out that there's one thing that ozone could not do and that is to chelate mercury. So all the gains that I have seen with ozone therapy, they did not hold. They lasted for, for some time, but then the mercury poisoning was too overwhelming, so no amount of ozone I was taking would fix that. Now, but there, there are many ozone experts, there are ozone doctors who have been practicing ozone therapy literally for 30 to 40 years, and they will claim, they will swear tooth and nail that ozone does indeed chelate mercury. Now, how is it possible? How is it possible that this misconception comes about? And there are basically two reasons for that. Number one reason is because ozone will remedy many symptoms caused by mercury. So if you're mercury toxic and have symptoms, for example, like arthritis or like some other inflammatory condition, then ozone therapy can reduce those symptoms or even eliminate them completely. Just like, for example, if you take vitamin C or vitamin B when you're mercury toxic, those vitamins can reduce the symptoms caused by mercury toxicity, but they do not actually chelate any mercury. So it's the same thing with ozone therapy. So this misconception can come about that someone who we know is mercury toxic, does ozone therapy, his symptoms improve, that one can falsely conclude that it happens because ozone removed some mercury. No, that is not the case. Another reason why this misconception about ozone and mercury comes about is that mercury levels on laboratory tests, they can move up and down without your body actually removing any mercury. So, for example, someone who has an acute exposure, an acute ongoing exposure to mercury, like for example amalgam fillings, and if that person runs a blood test or a urine test or a hair test, the levels of mercury on the test often show up as very high because there's an ongoing mercury exposure. Now, when that person removes the amalgam fillings, the removal process itself, again, can make the mercury levels spike on a test. After that, what happens, that is irrelevant of what else the person does, irrelevant whether that person takes vitamins or ozone therapy, the levels of mercury on the test can go down without the mercury having left the body at all. What happened instead is that the mercury just got bound deeper into the tissue. So if the mercury is, instead of in the blood, is now inside the brain or inside the liver or inside the nerves or uh, adrenals or some other tissue, the levels on the blood, urine, or hair tests of mercury will show as very, very low. Why? Because now the mercury is hidden. It's not out in the open because the body doesn't let go of it, but it's inside deeper tissue. So what can happen is that a person will test high on, let's say, for example, a blood test, high in mercury toxicity, then has the fillings removed, and the acute exposure to mercury ends, and hence the levels of mercury are now not in the blood anymore, okay, but instead inside the tissue. And let's say that the person in the same time did ozone therapy. So now the doctor who will do a test before ozone therapy and after ozone therapy, he will look at the lower mercury levels post ozone therapy and conclude falsely that it was the ozone which made the mercury levels go down. So this is how the misconception about ozone and mercury can come about. So now the question is, is it a good idea to do ozone therapy when being mercury toxic? And the answer is, it depends. 
for some people, like for me, for example, I was mercury toxic and I did ozone therapy. As I said, it was a life changing event. It was one of the most fantastic things I've done in my life when it comes to health. For others, what I have observed, it either doesn't work at all or it makes them only suffer without giving any benefit. So unfortunately, one cannot know which way it's going to go. So it's just a matter of trying it out. It can be a great way to reduce your mercury toxicity symptoms or it might not do anything for you. So now the question is, okay, if laboratory tests like blood, urine or hair are not conclusive for mercury toxicity, what is the best way to find out whether one is mercury toxic or not? And the best way is to, number one, end all mercury exposure. That means if you have amalgam fillings in your mouth, you have to have them removed safely. And then you start chelating with a frequent low-dose chelation method, also called Andrew Cutler method. And when you react to the chelation, it can be either worsening or improvement of your symptoms. That is a positive test for mercury toxicity. If there is no reaction to the chelation, not even after 10 rounds of high dosages, the likelihood that you're mercury toxic is very, very low. I hope this video was helpful for you and you will find additional information in the description below. Thank you.